Good morning and welcome to the fifth annual Berkshire Nonprofit Awards hosted by the Nonprofit Center of the Berkshires in partnership with the Berkshire Eagle. My name is Smitty Pignatelli and I very proudly serve as a state representative for the fourth, soon to be third, Berkshire District. Thank you very much to the Berkshire Innovation Center for once again for the third year hosting us virtually because of the pandemic, which I like to call an endemic. It's coming to the close, but it's still out there, so we all need to be safe and, and careful. It's been a very challenging year, not only for the Berkshire delegation, but for all of you, especially the nonprofits, who have really stepped up in a great way to help people all throughout the Berkshires, from North Adams all the way down to Sheffield. We have a very exciting lineup here today. It's going to take about 45 minutes. We've got a very special message from my dear friend and our Lieutenant Governor, Karen Polito. And we have a drawing for $3,000 cash prize to, for one lucky nonprofit. But before we do that, we can't have a show without the director of this amazing organization, the greatest name in Berkshire County, Liana Toscanini. She had this vision six years ago to corral and solidify the nonprofit sector of the Berkshires, and she's done an amazing job pulling this all together. This started out at a venue five years ago. It was sold out. She went to a bigger venue the next year. It was sold out, and then COVID hit but yet she's still selling out, doing amazing work on your behalf. So it's very my, my great pleasure to introduce my dear friend and the leader of the pack, Leanna Toscanini. Thanks so much, Smitty. We're delighted to have you as co-host for this fifth annual Berkshire Nonprofit Awards. Smitty is an amazing event partner, and we really appreciate everything he does all year round for Berkshire nonprofits. We're happy to be here today in Pittsfield, the ancestral homelands of the Mohican people, and in this beautiful Berkshire Innovation Center building. I want to heartily thank our sponsors, whose willingness to offer support for this celebration is deeply appreciated. Together, we get to recognize and applaud all Berkshire nonprofits this morning. Today, we honor seven extraordinary individuals chosen from among 86 nominations by a hardworking panel of 21 judges. Congratulations to all our nominees, our honorees, their nominators, and their organizations. While this annual awards event focuses on people as opposed to organizations, it is an opportunity to recognize our collective strength, our resilience, and our accomplishments. To my fellow nonprofit leaders, if you're like me, you're a little bit tired after two years of COVID-related challenges. The good news is self-care is now a widely practiced thing, and I hope you get to do more of it this year. We will continue to support you, pulling together programs to address your needs, gathering critical data such as the Berkshire Nonprofit Salary Survey, and making the public aware of the value of the nonprofit sector to our economy, to those less fortunate, and to our way of life here in Berkshire County. There is one person who made my life easier over the past five years and had tremendous impact on the nonprofit center. Her name is Elizabeth Stone. She wins my personal rock star award. And although she has moved on to new adventures, the structures and systems she created will live on. Thank you, Elizabeth. And now I'd like to introduce Fred Rutberg, publisher of the award-winning Berkshire Eagle, whose coverage of the nonprofit sector is nothing short of phenomenal, and fittingly, our major media sponsor. Fred? Thank you, Liana, and I am proud to be back for my fifth appearance before the Nonprofit Center of the Berkshires to wish you all a great day and to say a heartfelt thank you from the Berkshire Eagle. Uh, you people all make our lives richer and better and fuller, and the entire citizenry of the Berkshires is in your debt. Personally, over the last year, I have become more acquainted with some of the service aspects uh, of nonprofits, and I must say it has been quite an experience, uh, and it's been a positive one. The dedication, the commitment, and the just plain decency of the people who work in the service industry in our community is something that's truly remarkable. And so from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you, and I wish all of you a great day and a great event. I hope everybody comes out a winner, and it's my great pleasure to toss this back to my buddy, Smitty Pignatelli. Thank you, Judge. 
Well, Fred Rutberg, I always call him Judge, an old habit, and thank you again for the Berkshire Eagle for your sponsorship of today's event. We have some housekeeping items to take care of. Once again, this program runs about 45 minutes and will be available for viewing after today on YouTube and on our wonderful public access television stations throughout the Berkshires. Please feel free, in fact, we encourage you to make comments in the chat box, especially notes of congratulations to the wonderful honorees as they are presented. And now on to the awards presentation. We'll start with the award for executive leadership, and I'm proud to introduce the former mayor of North Adams and current and new president and CEO of the Berkshire United Way, Tom Bernard. Thank you, Smitty, for that great introduction and good morning. It's great to be here to present the NPC Executive Leadership Award. This award recognizes a nonprofit leader whose strategic vision, passion, innovation, perseverance, and integrity have led to a strong record of extraordinary organizational results. That's something today's award winner has in common with us at Berkshire United Way and our mission to build a stronger community together. And that's why it's my sincere privilege to present the Executive Leadership Award to Ananda Timpain, Executive Director of Railroad Street Youth Project. Ananda's passion for helping young people continually elevates the mission of Railroad Street Youth Project. She steadily and intentionally has built the organization over the past decade, quadrupling the budget. Ananda inspires staff, constituents, board members, and donors with her authenticity. She is always available to help young people and especially marginalized youth in the community find connection and advocate for themselves. Railroad Street board member Ann Herbst says, I wish every nonprofit had as capable and sensitive a leader as Ananda at the helm. Congratulations, Ananda. I first met Ananda when I was 15, and I had uh, a chip on my shoulder. It's still there somewhere, just smaller now. But um, Ananda came into the Youth Project, which was a place that I found a safe haven in my adolescent years. And she came in with kind of a, a more uh, business and marketing background. And um, when she first got hired as the executive director, um, the person before her was kind of a fan favorite. So she came in with a little bit of, uh, I guess, opposition, maybe um, skepticism. And with her more formal background in kind of business administration, a little more finances, a little more crunching, hard numbers. Um, my first concern with Ananda was whether or not she'd have a heart in the organization and whether or not it would lose its mission. And it was a big stepping stone for me to approach an executive director and say, hey, you know, this is my organization. What do you have to offer? And uh, obviously she has a little more prestige in the organization. Executive director is quite a title. But um, she heard me and I felt like an equal to her when we were having that conversation. And since then has just spawned a very authentic, very real, you know, very to the point relationship where I can come in, spill the beans on her lap and she will pick up the pieces every single time without a doubt. It does not matter what's going on in her life. She's there for me, and it feels that way. Thank you. What This award um, is such an honor because of how I was nominated and because of the list of people that were nominated and that it was also people in my, in my community um, who were on the committee that selected me. Um, and it's deeply, deeply touching and meaningful to be recognized by um, young people that I've worked with, like Austin and um, the staff I work with and members of my board who got together to nominate me behind my back. Um, because that's, those are the very people that I have learned to lead from and with, um, and to have them say, I think you're doing a good job, but not just a good job, but um, the kind of good job that other people should know about uh, is deeply meaningful and touching. 
Good morning, I'm Peter Taylor, president of Berkshire DeConnick Community Foundation. Now in its 35th year, the foundation brings together resources and people and organizations to tackle the region's most critical issues and to bring about lasting change. One of the most meaningful and consequential ways an individual can have an impact on their communities is through board service. That's why the foundation has as one of its priorities building the skills and supporting board leaders. It's also a signature part of our multi-year investment to strengthen community engagement across the region. Today, I'm honored to once again present this year's Board Leadership Award. This award is given every year to a board member who demonstrates commitment to the prudent use of all assets of an organization, provides oversight for activities that advance effectiveness and sustainability, ensures compliance with applicable laws and ethical practices, and serves on multiple committees. I'm pleased to present the Board Leadership Award to Dr. Marie Rudden, founder and board chair of the Berkshire Community Diaper Project. Since founding the Berkshire Diaper Project in 2014, Dr. Rudden has focused on strengthening this growing all-volunteer organization to distribute diapers to over 1,000 children each month. Dr. Rudden's nomination spoke to her effectiveness in encouraging ownership of mission, facilitating weekly board meetings, and engaging the board in every aspect of the organization. Dr. Rudden's efforts have been tireless and successful in both addressing an immediate need as well as raising awareness on an issue. Congratulations, Dr. Rudden, and thank you for strengthening your community as well as supporting young parents here in Berkshire County. She started in 2014 and has, has now 19 sites, four of which are in North County. She has given South Church over 600,000 diapers in that course, which our families have really appreciated. They come looking for diapers and many don't have the money, so they were using napkins from McDonald's or Wendy's and it's made their life much better and their children's life much better. Marie has worked hard to help others and is very deserving of this special award. Congratulations, Marie. I am humbled and very grateful to the Nonprofit Center of the Berkshires to receive this award. Um, board leadership, after all, really only works if you have a board of committed and lively, dedicated and creative board members, which uh, we have at the Berkshire Community Diaper Project. When I founded this organization back in 2014, I never, real, I never assumed that we would reach um, uh, uh, through a distribution through the whole county to 20 uh, parent-child agencies, WIC programs, and food pantries. But um, we have now given out 1,330,000 diapers throughout the county with the help of generous private donations and grants, including from the Berkshire DeConnick Foundation, which helped us uh, uh, distribute diapers in the North Adams, North County area. and. Um, and thanks to the National Diaper Bank Network, which has facilitated our purchasing large amounts of diapers at a reduced rate. Our board consists entirely of committed and dedicated volunteers. Some are social workers, um, some are parents and grandparents, um, and, it's, uh, and some are nurses. It's been an amazing opportunity for me to work with the people that have joined up to be in this project. Good morning, I'm Lori Kiley, Director of Berkshire Bank Foundation and Berkshire County Regional President for Berkshire Bank. I'm so pleased to be here once again supporting this wonderful event to honor the unsung heroes of our community. Volunteerism is so key to Berkshire Bank's culture and values, so I truly enjoy presenting this award each year. There are so many people who give of their time so generously, and this year we're honoring one in particular who has stood out during the challenging times we have faced over the last year. This award honors the volunteer who has shown outstanding dedication to a nonprofit or multiple nonprofit organizations whose programs serve the Berkshire County community.
It's my pleasure to present the Volunteer Award to Charles Benenti of the Berkshire Immigrant Center. There is a direct correlation between Charles' position as volunteer coordinator and the Berkshire Immigrant Center's evolution into a thriving nonprofit able to grow and better serve the immigrant community. By attending biweekly meetings and handling dozens of varied tasks, he paved the way for the hiring of senior staff to focus on priority issues. Most recently, Charles has taken the lead in supporting 60 evacuees from Afghanistan, putting in 20 hours a week to ensure they have everything they need. Congratulations, Charles. So Charles came to Jewish Family Service of Western Massachusetts as the team leader um, of the Berkshire Immigrant Center team to host an Afghan family. Um, we, we assigned his family in December of 2021 and immediately he took off running and uh, did all aspects of resettlement for this particular family. So they, uh, they did airport pickups, they helped furnish an apartment, they've found employment, they've done a lot of driving to medical, dental, legal appointments, and um, really have embraced uh, the Afghan family as like his own family, um, making sure that they have felt supported and cared for and and every part of assimilating and, and acculturation into our culture um, has been supported through Charles and his team and, and through his leadership. He has um, a real capacity for attention to detail. He is extremely accountable and reliable. He comes to all of the team meetings, um, asks a lot of questions, really follows up on concerns for the family and questions from the volunteers. And he has um, a real capacity to just listen and be a great leader and very compassionate towards his own team members who are also volunteers and towards me and um, towards uh, his, his family as well. Uh, I want to thank Gabriella for her kind remarks and uh, um, her thoughtfulness. Uh, I feel she's, I see myself somewhat in what she said, but I see the teams and volunteers I'm working with uh, primarily in the, the frontline work they do. Um, I came of age in uh, the uh, civil rights era and uh, Vietnam, so activism has been part of my life for many years. And um, I, uh, uh, particularly here in the Berkshires, advocated for affordable housing and uh, uh, I've had door-to-door -door, uh, contact with low-income people and those in need in, in my retirement years. And uh, the work at the Immigrant Center was a natural outcome of that. Uh, my own family were immigrants, and I have their stories, and I feel uh, this is very personal. Uh, I came to the Immigrant Center about five years ago, uh, became the volunteer coordinator about three years ago, and um, I work mostly on uh, public events, enlisting volunteers, coordinating their work for naturalization ceremonies, for uh, um, public information ceremonies in the uh, community. The work we're doing for the Afghan resettlement, which began back in November, early December, is unlike anything I've done to this point. It, it, it has been life-changing. And I want to thank um, the Immigrant Center for nominating me for this. I, it was unexpected. I had no idea, and it, it, was, it was a little embarrassing to me. I, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't like, I, I prefer to be in the background and, and sort of coordinate things uh, and, rather than be in the spotlight. But here I am, and, and so uh, I, thank, I thank you for the nomination. I thank you on behalf of, of the volunteers I'm working with. They thank you, too. When I started Music in Common 17 years ago, I had one objective in mind, to harness the connective power of music to dismantle hate and deepen understanding and empathy between people and communities in conflict. From our work in the Middle East to right here in the Berkshires, this has been our North Star. The Black Legacy Project, Music in Common's latest initiative, is a musical celebration of Black history to advance racial solidarity, 
equity, and belonging. A national project born here in the Berkshires, the Black LP brings together Black and white artists and artists of all backgrounds to record present day interpretations of songs central to the Black American experience and record originals relevant to the pressing calls for change of our time. We're honored to present to you one of those songs, Rise Up, which features many of the three dozen local artists that were featured on the project. We hope you enjoy. Good morning. I'm Jennifer Vrabel, Executive Director of Communications, Planning, and Development at Berkshire Health Systems, the region's leading nonprofit health care provider and the region's largest employer. Today, it's an honor to present the Samuel Rose Stumo Youth Leadership Award 
to Jade Schnaber of Lever, Inc. This award acknowledges young people who have contributed meaningfully to the Berkshire nonprofit sector, either through volunteer or paid work. The award is named for Samia Rose Stumo of Sheffield, who died in March 2019 in the crash of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302. Once an intern herself, Jade Schnaber, age 23, now manages workforce programs at Lever. She spearheaded Lever's inclusive internship preparation program, helping college students from marginalized populations. A staunch advocate for equity in all forms, Jade regularly speaks out publicly to create opportunities for others. She is proof that young people have the power to change the world. Through her work, students will go on to make an impact on the region, a chain of connection that will resonate here for years to come. Congratulations, Jade. That lens that she has on uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, within the Berkshire community, you know, it's something that, you know, a lot of us should like model after, you know, it, it, we, we should continue to support our students even after they graduate uh, from, from college um, because it, it, it does really um, impact their lives. Um, and, and having um, representation within this program um, lets students know that, you know, I, I see myself and I can see myself in these positions uh, and that I can do it too as well, you know, and there's a number of conversations that I've had with uh, my, my mentees as well. Um, so thank you, Jade, for everything you've done to really, really spearhead this program. Um, it's been very rewarding uh, to myself, uh, I'm sure to the, to the students who uh, have gone through and is going through this program now. Uh, so thank you so much for, for all that you are doing and have done for this community. Well, thank you all for um, recognizing me for this award. Um, thank you to the Berkshire Nonprofit Center. Thank you to all the participants in the program, the students and the mentors, because without you, this program wouldn't have been possible. Thank you to my colleagues at Lever, and most importantly, thank you to our funder, the Gilson Family Foundation, for having a specific interest in this program. When I first started at Lever about two years ago, it was important to me that we looked into bringing more diverse backgrounds to the Berkshire County workforce. We were already doing a great job at bringing more young people into the workforce, but since our makeup is 90% white, we really needed to get more people of color, more queer people, and anybody who wasn't already being represented. From this program, we've already been able to serve almost 40 students um, from a lot of local colleges, including MCLA, BCC, and Williams. Um, and we've involved 15 mentors. They've shown students that representation does matter and that they are represented in our workforce and that there are people interested in hiring them and keeping them here in the local community. So again, thank you to everybody who's participated and thank you to the Berkshire Nonprofit Center. My name is Robin McGraw. I'm the president of Black Rock Foundation and the senior director of the Donald C. McGraw Foundation. And today, it is my honor to present Katie Clark of Community Access to the Arts with the Rockstar Award. This award is given to a nonprofit staff member whose work has had a significant impact on an organization. Recognized by peers for exhibiting a can-do attitude, demonstrating a high level of commitment and responsibility, and going above and beyond the job description. As administrative director, Katie is a force of nature at the center of CADA's smooth running organization. She is deeply honest and ethical, with an eagle eye and an unwavering work ethic, one of those rare people who can simultaneously be detail-oriented and see the big picture. Over 16 years, her dedication to task, creative problem-solving, flexibility, intelligence, and kind composure make her a gift to any executive director, staff, and board. She's created a business facilities plan so thorough and compelling that is now being used as a model by one of CADA's major grant funders. Congratulations, Katie. In March 2020, CADA had just purchased a building and completed a major studs out renovation to create our first permanent home. Katie helped create a facilities business plan and then updated our facilities budget daily to track a fast moving complex renovation so that CADA and its donors could account for every single dollar spent. It was a Herculean effort. 
Three days after we opened the doors of that beautiful facility to our artists with disabilities, the pandemic struck. Our artists and partners experienced some of the first COVID cases in Berkshire County, and we knew we had to act fast to find a new way to deliver CATA programs. But in the meantime, we also saw that earned income was plummeting. And so we not only had to reinvent programs, but also reinvent our business model. Katie's dedication and drive made all the difference. She created detailed financial scenario plans so we could explore all possible options in a time of crisis, the good, the bad, and the ugly. She did all the legwork to get CATA two PPP loans and did mountains of paperwork and tracking to ensure that we qualified for forgiveness. CATA's PPP application was one of the first received by our bank, and she worked literally overnight to ensure that we received funding in that first round so that programs serving CATA artists could continue in a time when our community needed us. Katie's dedication is behind all we do at CATA, and she truly is a rock star. Thank you. Thank you so much for this recognition. It's uh, really lovely um, to have this Rockstar uh, Award this year. Such an honor. Um, I just uh, really appreciate everything that Margaret uh, has said. That was uh, really <laughs> so nice to hear. Um, it's been great working alongside her. I've been so fortunate to be with CATA for as long as I have. So fortunate that Sandy Newman had the idea for CATA over 28 years ago. Um, it's such a great part of the nonprofit uh, side of the, the Berkshires to be able to provide arts programs to people with disabilities um, here in the Berkshires. I'm Berkshire born and raised and so proud of this organization being here. Um, and so uh, I'm thankful to Liana for this uh, award in the nonprofit center, realizing um, the admin side, recognizing the admin side um, and the importance of um, what it takes to make the, all of the nonprofits here in the Berkshires uh, thrive and survive. Um, so thank you, this is, this is really lovely. I so appreciate it. Good morning, I'm Jennifer Connor Shemsky from Greylock Federal Credit Union. At Greylock, I'm the manager of community support and events. And at Greylock, our vision is to enable our community to thrive. We all know it takes a whole community to thrive. And here today, I'm delighted to present the award for this year's Unsung Hero. This award honors the contribution of a nonprofit staff member or volunteer in any organization whose good work has not gone publicly recognized in Berkshire County. I'm delighted to say that this year's winner is Courtney Kimball of Construct, Inc. As program manager, Courtney facilitates all the services to individuals who are coming out of homelessness. She personifies the trauma-informed approach, believing in participants until they can believe in themselves. A few things about Courtney. She's thorough. She's tenacious. She's an advocate for all. She's kind, reliable, and very resourceful. Courtney really has one of the hardest, hardest jobs imaginable. She's an ally to the immigrant community. She really is the face of Construct through the pandemic resources. She's provided mental health first aid as well as rental assistance. She met all the protocols and came through in a pandemic-free tradition transitional housing. I'm delighted this year to present the award to Courtney Kimball. Well-deserved, Courtney. I met Courtney and um, right from the jump, you know, she, she's very uh, motivated. She's very um, determined to help people. Um, she's just all around a loving, caring person, you know. I mean, I've been in and out of programs for a long time, but this is far one of the best programs I've been in because it's like she cares, you know, and she doesn't. She doesn't um, discriminate or anything like that. Like, she's just an all-around great person. So Courtney has helped me along with other things, you know, besides the Section 8 and stuff like that. Like, she's been a friend, too, you know, and because I've been through going through a lot of hardships before I came out here and stuff. So, you know, she's just. I, I don't know. I can't say enough about Courtney. Courtney's just awesome. None of us do the, we all do this because we care and because we like what we do, I would hope. Um, 
but it is nice to be recognized for things that um, that aren't normally recognized. Just every day we're always making a difference, which is one of the things I love most about my job is that I can actually make a difference in people's lives. And there are times where it's really difficult um, when you know, you're know you working with a lot of clients and you're not able to make miracles happen. But when you're able to actually help somebody, it's it, it makes it all worth it at the end. You can really like see um, the difference that you make in people's lives. And just hearing things like Danielle's interview um, really kind of brings that back because every you know, there can be weeks and weeks where you just kind of feel like things are impossible and it's really hard to help people with housing right now in Berkshire County. So when you can actually make a difference and then see that they're so appreciative, um, it makes all of the hard work for months and months and months or sometimes years um, worth all of that. I couldn't do my job as well as I do it without the staff that I have behind me. Um, the staff at Construct, we work as a team. We, um, they're very supportive. The leadership, you know, um, my boss makes sure that we all feel as part of a team and that we're heard and that we're supported. And I wouldn't be able to do my job to the best of my ability without the people that I work with. Good morning. My name is Casey Rothstein Fitzpatrick from the Jane and Jack Fitzpatrick Trust. I have the honor this morning of presenting this year's Lifetime Achievement Award to Jerry Burke, President and CEO of Hillcrest Educational Centers. Jerry's experience spans over 40 years working with children with special needs in both private and the public school system. He has served at Hillcrest Educational Centers since 1985 and as CEO since 1992, a rare accomplishment of tenure and success. At Hillcrest, he has been a part of a team who transformed a bankrupt company into a joint commission accredited organization employing over 500 professionals. Jerry has also served in many leadership positions, including the boards of Berkshire United Way, One Berkshire, Berkshire County Business Roundtable, Massachusetts Business Roundtable, Mass Hire, Massachusetts Workforce Investment, and Greylock Federal Credit Union. He has also served as president of the Massachusetts Association of Private Schools. In every case, he leaves the organization stronger than when he joined. A respected business leader who successfully brought attention to the nonprofit sector, Jerry's commitment to the local community is unmatched. He serves as mentor to many nonprofit executives and gives of his time and talent freely. John Bissell from Greylock Federal Credit Union has said, every nonprofit business leader whom I know in this region and most for-profit business leaders too, count Jerry as a mentor and confidant. Thank you, Jerry, for all your transformative work for Berkshire County and congratulations on this award. Where Jerry is really unique is that he's committed to Hillcrest first and foremost, for sure, but he's committed to the entire nonprofit sector and to the economic vitality of the Berkshires uh, in general. And so he's been on a many, many different boards. He's helped start a couple different nonprofit support groups um, to, to really elevate the nonprofits, make sure people know the economic impact that they're having, as well as obviously the social impact with all their services. Um, he's not competitive in that sense. And whenever there's a new nonprofit leader in the community, you know, new and or elevated, he's taking them out to lunch. He's reaching out to them and saying, what can I do? Um, and he does that on a personal level too. You know, so many people in life face personal tragedies. And when things happen for people in the Berkshires that he knows, he is the first one to call them and say, what can I do to help? What can I do to support? Really strong, confident. You know, you can really tell Jerry anything and know that it's safe with him and he can advise you, which is terrific. His volunteerism is incredible. He's been on so many different boards. My experience with him was on the Berkshire United Way board. He was a phenomenal board member. He challenged me. Um, I always like to be challenged. And so he did that really well. Um, and I appreciated his uh, his sage advice. Um, and he, he stayed very close after he went off the board. And of course, he put a different help Hillcrest person, uh, Chris Smith, onto the board to show the continued commitment of Hillcrest to Berkshire United Way to our community. And, you know, maybe in closing, uh, he does all that while he's also an amazing family man. Uh, you know, he's got 
kids he adores. He's got a lovely wife. He's got um, siblings he talks about all the time and their trips to the Cape. He's just a an all around um, wonderful person who uh, more than deserves this. And now he's gonna have to let all of us start taking him to lunch because he's been buying lunch for a lot of people for over 30 years and uh, in retirement, we need to return the favor. So thank you, Jerry. Well, thank you very much, Chris, for those kind words. Uh, you and I have been friends for years and uh, it's, it's a special meaning to me that you're, uh, you're, you're part of this uh, program this morning. I do want to express my appreciation to the nonprofit uh, center of the Berkshires uh, for this recognition. Um, I guess a lifetime achievement award says that I'm getting old or I am old, I guess. Uh, but nevertheless, it's, it's uh, very humbling to be recognized, um, especially when you look at uh, the nominees uh, and some of their outstanding service to our community. So, you know, as part of uh, Hillcrest, we've always believed that Berkshire County community is a very important part for us and that we want to reach back in that community and support it as well. So on behalf of all of our employees and our board of directors and our students that we have here, we want to, we want to thank you for this recognition given to me uh, as I represent that group as a whole. You know, the, non the nonprofit business, uh, the nonprofit entities within Berkshire County is an incredibly important part of our economy and our life here. Back in uh, 2008 and 2012, a number of us got together with the Chamber of Berkshire United Way and others, and we did an uh, economic impact study uh, from the nonprofit perspective. And it was a very enlightening piece for the community to recognize just how important the nonprofit community is uh, in our structure and what we bring to the table. And to be recognized by this group of outstanding organizations is a very special thing for me that I will never I will not soon forget. So thank you again, Chris. Thank you all. And uh, God bless. Good morning. I'm Arik Enchel, and I serve on the board for the Nonprofit Center of the Berkshires. And I want to say a big thank you to our supporters of the Breakfast Club. These are individuals and business supporters that appreciate all the ways the NPC supports nonprofits. Demand for our services has grown exponentially during COVID, and we really appreciate these donations, which help us serve hundreds of nonprofits in our community. Because of you, we'll embark on some exciting new projects, such as a board composition survey to gather benchmark data and board trainings for those new to board service. Your support will help us maintain 25 different programs and services, including workshops, networking events, and sector advocacy. Thank you. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce a very special friend, not only to me, but to for all of us here in the Berkshires. Our Lieutenant Governor, Karen Polito, has crisscrossed the state on many, many occasions. She has actually visited every single community in the Commonwealth at least two or three times. I don't know of another Lieutenant Governor who's ever done that in the history of Massachusetts. She's not only a dear friend to me personally, but she's a friend especially to the nonprofits across the Commonwealth. She recognizes the value that you bring to our environment each and every day. And she's gracing us with a very special message to all of the honoraries here today. So without further ado, my dear friend, our wonderful Lieutenant Governor, Karen Polito. Hello, everyone. I'm Karen Polito, Lieutenant Governor. And I'd first like to thank my good friend, Representative Pignatelli, for having me be a part of this very special event. And thank you, Representative, for all that you do. I'd like to also thank the Nonprofit Center of the Berkshires for inviting me to celebrate and honor your awardees. And I'm thrilled to be here, even though virtually, for this fifth annual presentation of the awards. Our administration is keenly aware of the importance of recognizing those in the community that go above and beyond for the good of their fellow citizen. Over the past six years, and the last two especially, we have witnessed some incredible achievements, both at the state and local levels. As our Commonwealth and the nation have combated COVID-19 in their communities, there has been no greater example of the power that being thoughtful, selfless, and generous has. We've seen families and communities go to great lengths to care for their neighbors, and today's honorees are no different. They have stood out amongst their contemporaries, showing their dedication to public service, and exemplifying the very best of what our communities have to offer, helping those in the Commonwealth that need them the most at the time they're most in need. Whether through arts and culture, 
education or health care, each of you being honored here today has gone the extra mile to support your community and make an impact on people's lives. Time and time again, you have stepped up to help the people of Massachusetts meet their needs, solve their problems, and provide resources, offering your time and your talents to support the needs of your neighbors. This is truly remarkable and appreciated. To all of the recipients, thank you. Thank you for the pride and humility you have shown in your work and for your continued commitment to the people of our great state. You continue to exemplify the hope for the Commonwealth that the governor and I held when we started this journey. Enjoy the, the rest of this program. Enjoy your friends and your family and enjoy the great community that you are a part of. Congratulations to all of you. Hello, I'm Aidan Gilligan, Vice President and Commercial Lender at Salisbury Bank and Trust. I'm honored to have the opportunity to present this year's winner of the $3,000 cash prize. Every nonprofit attending today has an equal opportunity to win these extra funds. A special thank you goes out to all of our sponsors that make this giveaway possible. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The winner is... Kropala Center for Yoga and Health. Congratulations. Kropalo is a nonprofit educational organization dedicated to empowering people and communities to realize their full potential through the transformative wisdom and practice of yoga. Congratulations to Kropalo, and thank you to all of the nonprofits that make our community a better place to work and live. Congratulations again to all of our honorees. This is your day. Continue to keep up the good work. You're doing wonderful work. Thank you very much again to our wonderful Lieutenant Governor, our terrific sponsors who are on the board behind me. Again, thank you to the Berkshire Innovation Center for opening the doors to this wonderful opportunity for us all. If you're inspired by today's honorees, their organizations, and the Nonprofit Center of the Berkshires, check out the website, npcberkshires.org, and learn how to get involved. Liana Toscanini does some fantastic work, but many hands make lighter work. So check it out npcberkshire.org. In the meantime, let's all be safe, continue to be healthy, and let's all be Berkshire.